Welcome to another episode of Steam Engines in Depth. Richard Trevithick was an engineer and a pioneer of strong steam. As son of a Cornish mine captain, he grew up in Penn Ponds near Camburn. This was a busy area where Newcomen atmospheric steam engines had been used to drain mines since several decades. Watt's condenser engines were quite new when Trevithick was a boy. The house of Trevithick's childhood still exists. The cottage may be visited once a week. Today Trevithick's achievements are indisputable, but when he died in 1833 it was not even possible to collect enough money for a tombstone, so he was buried in a part reserved for the poor. In the following decades, his name was somewhat lost. In 1882, things began to change when Hyde Clark suggested to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Trevithick's death in 1883. He proposed to erect a statue in Westminster Abbey, but finally this petition was signed. To the very Reverend the Dean of Westminster, Reverend Sir, we, the undersigned civil, mechanical, mining and marine engineers and others, beg to lay before you our earnest request that you will think fit to grant a site for a good memorial window in the Abbey to the late Richard Trevithick, who was the inventor of the locomotive engine and of steam carriages on common roads, and we think we ought to point out distinctly that as a competitor or rival of the celebrated James Watt, he introduced a great element of economy by the use of high-pressure steam now universally adopted in the steam engines, and he constructed numerous very large pumping engines in Cornwall for pumping out the mines with the greatest success, and in this respect he was distinctly far ahead of James Watt himself. His inventions were numerous. Amongst them may be mentioned as perfectly successful the Cornish boiler, the dredging engine for deepening rivers and canals, iron floating docks, iron ships masts, thrashing engines and machines, stone-breaking machines and others of a minor character. Trevithick was much engaged in mining operations in Cornwall and for ten years in Peru, erecting and superintending his pumping and other engines at the gold and silver mines, from which he returned on a revolution breaking out there. In thus bringing to your notice the inventive mind and great practical engineering ability of this great man, we trust we may be justified in our appeal to you for permission to erect a window to the memory of a man who did so much for his country. In any case, the request was granted and a window was unveiled in 1888. Even the text of the petition makes it clear that Richard Trevithick had a very eventful life. Being absent from his home country for 11 years, he was cut off from the steam engine development in the 1820s. Now let us focus on the technical facts. A most interesting question is, what are the remains of Trevithick's work? The oldest one is this model road locomotive engine on display in the Science Museum London. This is a model steam engine able to propel itself on a floor. The main body is a boiler. The cylinder is mostly in the boiler barrel, the piston rod connected to a crosshead. From that crosshead two connecting rods drive the wheels. One of these wheels has a gear meshing with a pinion fixed to a flywheel so the flywheel turns with greater speed and helps the piston to better overcome the dead centers. A small wheel is fixed on the other end of the boiler barrel. 
The model should have been able to drive a circle. Two feet may be unfolded to have a stationary engine. The piston rod will actuate a valve lever by means of a plug rod. Source of heat was an iron bar made red hot and then put into the boiler. OK, you are asking, why should this little thing be so important? Think of a new common atmospheric engine or robot condenser engine. They are huge. There is a big beam. Everything is built into an engine house. They have a dedicated boiler. The watt engine has a condenser and an air pump. Now, Trevithick came up with a really new idea. Use strong steam and get rid of condenser and air pump. The model steam engine proved his idea. But this was a model made of brass, some iron and maybe copper. Most likely the work of a clockmaker, William West, brother-in-law of Richard Trevithick. Trevithick married in 1797. His wife Jane was daughter of John Harvey from Hale. In 1779 John had established a foundry and engineering works. This background helped to solve the first problem coming up in building the real thing. The boiler of the new engine was a casting, thus avoiding the trouble with boilers riveted from small wrought iron plates. On the other hand, such a casting could only withstand the pressure and the tensions caused by the fire if well constructed and cast. This is a terrific high pressure steam engine, again on display in the Science Museum London. The cast iron boiler can clearly be seen. The top of the cylinder sticks out of the boiler barrel. Even a crosshead can be spotted. The front plate, presumably made from wrought iron, is screwed to the barrel using massive square nuts. It may be removed easily. The firebox door is hinged at the right side. If opened with momentum it will hit the chimney. I think it's just a small door, thus making it not too easy for the boilerman to shovel coal into the boiler. The open space below is for cleaning the ashes. There are no instruments at this boiler, just two cocks. One is on the manhole cover. The boiler water level was supposed to be between these cocks, a very simple device demanding constant care of the boilerman. The flywheel is a light one, indicating that the engine ran at a higher speed. Here you can see that the exhaust steam is fed to the chimney, which will provide a better draft. See the small pump next to the left foot? It was driven by a lever connected to the crosshead. The engine had not only a feed water pump, but the cold water from the small cistern was heated by the exhaust steam before being fed into the boiler. The engine had a safety valve, which is a little bit hard to spot at the photos. I think there is no doubt about its relationship to the model steam engine. All in all, we have a self-contained engine, no need for a building to accommodate a beam, just a small pit was needed for the flywheel and a floor strong enough to carry the engine's weight. Due to the sound of the exhaust steam, these engines became known as puffers. They were used as winding engines as well as for driving machinery in factories. They were even installed on barges for dredging purposes. Now, watch a model of such an engine and enjoy the parts moving.
Finally, some data about other Trevithic remains in the Science Museum, not on display. Very few Trevithic-related items may be found in other museums. This hydraulic pumping engine was found 1979 in an abandoned mine in Derbyshire. Built 1819 to Trevithic's design by the Coalbrookdale Company, it was worked hydraulically, that is, a pump on the surface created water pressure to operate the engine underground. It is on display in the Peak District Mining Museum. Some engine parts of a Trevithic puffer are on display at the Museum of Iron, one of the Ironbridge Gorge Museums. You can see crosshead, piston rod, gland, cylinder cover, piston, top of the cylinder with the valve housing. In his unpublished volume 2 of the Treatise on the Steam Engine, John Farray had a drawing of a Trevithic engine. It was long unknown to the historians of technology because the page proofs were lost in the archives for decades. This engine eventually became known as the Lambeth engine. Farray stated that he took his sketch 1804 from a newly erected engine in London. The cast iron boiler is vertical and set in brickwork. The cylinder is placed horizontally in the boiler, only one third of its length protruding from the boiler. The crosshead is guided by two slide bars. From my perspective, Trevithick used the first slider crank linkage, which should become so typical for all younger steam engines. Slide bars, crankshaft, bearings and flywheel are mounted to a substantial wooden structure. There is not much more known about the Lambeth engine. Fortunately, the Austrian prince Nicholas II Esterhazy was 1803 in London and bought a Trevithic steam engine. There are quite some details known. On October 7, 1803, the Austrian custom office noted that 10 wooden boxes with machinery arrived. But Esterhazy had not only bought an engine, he had engaged an engineer. Johann Dietrich Langenreiter from Oldenburg, Germany, installed the engine at the prince's premises in Eisenstadt, where it was used to pump water for greenhouses, etc., but when the engine was working fine, Langenreiter built a model. And this model is preserved in the Technisches Museum Wien. These are Trevithic's preserved engines as far as I know them. You may ask now, what about the locomotion engine? What about steam carriages on ordinary roads? Well, there are some replicas. As these replicas are used in the public, they must adhere to modern safety standards. No boiler inspector would accept a cast iron boiler today. Water level gauges and pressure gauges are necessary. They were not even invented in Trevithick's lifetime. On the other hand, even if there are drawings, these are by no means shop drawings in a modern sense. But let us be grateful for people spending time and money to bring these engines to life. The first replica is the Puffing Devil. It's a steam carriage able to be driven on roads. Trevithick tried it Christmas 1801 in Camburn. Unfortunately, it was damaged only a few days later and had to be given up. Basically, the Puffing Devil is a puffer on wheels. The replica was built 2001 by members of the Trevithick Society. 
Since then it is shown and steamed regularly, for example at the Trevithic Day in Camborne. Today it is no longer joining the steam parade, but driven only up and down in a side street. Since I have seen life how difficult it is to control, I fully understand this decision. See and hear the puffing devil in action in the last part of this video. Next is the London steam carriage. In 1802 Trevithick together with his brother-in-law Andrew Vivian got a patent on the high pressure steam engine. The drawings filed with the patent request have been preserved. One of them shows a steam powered carriage. This has been built by Harvey of Hale and there have been tests in London in 1803. Strangely, these tests with seven or eight passengers for each ride have not been mentioned in any newspapers. An engineer of the British Navy Board was able to make drawings, which became the starting point for Tom Brockton's replica. Wheels with a diameter of nearly 2,50 m and a carriage with a total height of 3,50 m make an impressive sight. Trevithick designed a new boiler layout called a breeches flue boiler. This had a relatively small water volume but a large heating surface. I will put some links in the video description. The Penny Darren locomotive. Penny Darren was the fourth ironwork at Merthyr Tydfil, a town in Wales. They all wanted to bring their products by boat. In 1794 a canal from Merthyr Tydfil to Cardiff was opened. It had 24 miles with 50 locks. But congestion turned out to be a problem, mainly at the upper end of the canal. Richard Crawshay, one of the four ironworks owners who had the controlling interest, was demanding preferential treatment for his boats. The other three owners found a legal trick and built a tramway to bypass the first section of the canal, approximately 10 miles. For this Merthyr tram road cast iron rails on stone pillars were used. The carriages were drawn by horses. It was finished in 1802. Samuel Homfrey from the Panidaren Ironworks already used a Trevithick puffer. In 1803 he bought part of Trevithick's patent of 1802. In 1804 he gave him the chance to build and test a steam-powered tram wagon. From the very beginning the engine could be used stationary as well. When Richard Crawshay learned the news, he stated that would be impossible. Smooth wheels on smooth rails would simply spin. Eventually a wager was set up with a very substantial sum, 500 guineas, in today's money about 23,000 pounds. Richard Hill, owner of the Plymouth Iron Works, acted as referee. Humphrey stated that with Trevithick's locomotive it would be possible to haul 10 tons of iron to the end point of the tramway and then bring back the empty trams. The iron was delivered in February 1804, but the engine broke down on the way back. The wager remained unsettled. On further trials some of the cast iron rails broke due to the engine's weight. So, for the time being, horses were better suited for haulage. Trevithick's engine was used as colliery winding engine. The replica was built in 1981 by the National Museum Wales. Today it is in the National Waterfront Museum Swansea. See the video description for a YouTube link. Catch me who can. In July 1808, London newspapers like The Times and The Observer informed their readers about a racing steam engine. Trevithick had built a new engine 
which was to run on a circular railway. But the whole thing turned out to be a financial disaster. Tickets were one shilling, but the place chosen had a very soft ground and the rails had to be strengthened by timber. The cast iron rails broke frequently and finally the engine turned over and the whole show came to an end. In 2007 some enthusiasts started to build a replica of the engine. When I last visited their website it seems not to be finished. Finally enjoy footage from the Trevithic Day 2019 held since 1984 on last Saturday in April, Trevithic Day helps to remember a very important part of the local history. I hope you found this episode of Steam Engines in-depth interesting. So long for now.